mother speaks. I am great mother, holy spirit, yin, divine mother, cosmic moon, deep space, the moon, dark matter, the void, the black hole, Atar, Isis, Diana, Mami, Ishtar, Kali, Mammy, and Mother Mary. Hello, welcome to Great Mother Speaks. I'm Tammy Taylor, your manifestation muse. And today we're talking about a mighty journey into the Taurus and Gemini full moon. Welcome, everyone. This is in Scorpio and Vedic astrology. Your full moon is in Taurus. And in the Western tropical astrology, of course, the sun is in Sag. It's been in Sag for a couple of weeks now. And our full moon is in Gemini. I mean our, because what I want to talk about is the sage and the regenerator. That's the sun, because the full moon is that sun reflection on the moon. And so we are talking about that sage in Sagittarius with the Western astrology, which is earth-focused, earth-oriented, earth-centric. That sage in that that medium, that milieu. What is a sage in the Western world? Okay? And the moon reflecting that in Western astrology with the Gemini, the inquisitive, communicator, fun loving, um, you know, du- dualistic, you know, can see both sides, diplomatic. How is that moon reflecting that Western sage? And in Vedic astrology, as you listen, you're going to be looking at that scorpion that is in and out of the underworld and up and down. And that rejuvenation, that kundalini up and down the 10th chakra to the, you know, 12th we want to talk about. The 1st to the 7th is what we can see in those other chakras that actually go two feet into the ground up above our heads into the auric field. That journey of Scorpio, sun. And the moon being in Taurus, which is that grounding, that secure, that real, loyal, clear about desires and beauty and what balance is and experiencing that being reflected by that rejuvenation, that digestion, that processing of the physical ephemeral experience. So we are on the precipice of the ancient times of darkness in which the light shone through. So happy Christmas Hanukkah. Happy Christmas Hanukkah. This is for (coughs) all of us and for all traditions a time where we look for the light because we are surrounded by darkness in the northern hemisphere and mostly western astrology. So it's a time of really getting in touch with that inner guru, that inner Christos, that inner soul of what you know, you know, you know, to guide you to be the guiding light. And in our Vedic astrology, and the reason we go back and forth with this is let me tell you, all great mother has to do is love. And that's so hard for us to understand that we have to look for the light in other words we have to want to know why we're worthy we have to want to know you know what that means to be a divine child of the great mother father god we have to desire that revelation in order for it to be real in us that's the kundalini journey and so when we talk about the mentality that divides the ignorance of our divinity and the living experiential bliss of that experience We're talking about Western and Vedic astrology. Yours. Get your chart in the description box below so that you'll know which one you are. Because when you want to tap into that inner guru, you're going to be looking at your Vedic Joytish astrology to see what's going on with your soul evolution. Because Vedic astrology is moon 
biased, I'll say. It's not moon-centric. It is based on an astrology that is astronomically correct, not astrologically. That's just what we're talking about, astrology. I'm talking about over there at NASA astronomically correct in terms of the actual measurements in the cosmos it's not centered on anything but it is biased toward the moon <clears throat> okay and so we are in lunar cycles with great mother energy that is a cycle that all it does is love on us that's a planet that that's all it does that's all the moon does you look up any definition of the moon it's about connection it's about you know uh, uh, loving communication and partnering and that's all it does is love on us and with a commitment of a great mother because it it surrounds us it revolves around us this whole life is about us you know and the moon changes every two and a half days into a different sign and so right now it is in Gemini in the western and it is in Taurus in the Vedic so in the Vedic, you're going to see what your moon is doing on a soul level. How is the moon affecting your soul in the cosmos? So, so many of us are aware that our souls are not in our bodies. We don't know where our soul is. Yeah, we're alive. And so that means that there is an auric field that sustains this life. But it's a dull mentality. Because it's so dense. But when we get into the soul coming into the body and when we're ready to learn those lessons and when we're ready to tap into that inner guru, we, we tap into the, our, our, our Vedic to see, okay, so the moon is in Taurus and Vedic right now and it's a full moon. Okay, so Taurus means, well, that's earthy, that's whatever. Do your basic and just go through your basic understanding of Taurus and see how your soul is experiencing your incarnation right now okay so the sun is in scorpio in vedic how is it being rejuvenated what types of things is it processing those deep things that you're going through your soul is experiencing that through you like a lens that's been put on a camera it's looking through your, your lens and let's say the soul is um, the operator of the camera. But the actual camera itself is the karma, the composite experiences of that soul. That is its first filter. And we accumulate those over lifetimes. But that's the camera. It has all the bells and whistles that need to make a photograph happen. And that's all a lifetime is. It's a snapshot of an experience. And so... The camera is adjusted right now to this incarnation once it puts that lens on. It's a different lens. It's a different lifetime. So the camera is the karma. The operator is the soul. And the lens is whatever and whoever you call yourself. Your biography at the, on the back of your book, on the back of your snapshot. That's your ego. Okay, and that is what the lens is and seeing. That's how the lens is seeing this experience right now. Okay, and so you can say, okay, well, my Western is that lens, you know, snapping around on the camera, refocusing. And if you're too young to remember those types of cameras, just pick up a National Geographic, um, you know, pre-1990. Okay, and you'll see the difference in the photos. You know, they're more earthy. You know, anyway, this is what you want to do because all Great Mother does is love. That's her job. That is her only job. That is all she does in all the different signs and in the Vedic and all the different nakshatras. Okay, so you want to do the same with when you know that you're being emotional and you all in your feelings, as they say, all in your emotions, that Western astrology. Okay, so we want to make that very clear because the assumption is people who subscribe to this channel either already know this or want to, you know, 
it's the assumption is to you in order to understand what great mother is coming through saying you have to have this very rudimentary basic understanding of yourself in order to understand what she's saying to you because she doesn't see us the way we see ourselves okay <laughs> And so you'll see that once you get hit to what's going on with your birth chart, you know, that's that's a snapshot of your collective karma. OK, that's that that's a snapshot of that. You got snapshots of individual lives. You have a snapshot of the whole picture, you know, and that's the whole picture. And that is how she sees us with love, with the awareness of what it means that she and great Father God have produced a legacy of divinity throughout the cosmos and one of its form is in the human form okay and all her job is is to love all of creation perpetuate it she is the creatrix so if, if that is you and you and, and you were creating the cosmos, how would you see your child? <laughs> how would you see your child? Your child is a freaking bomb, okay? <laughs> and so the stuff that we're going through and everything, she completely knows because forget DNA, we're part of the source. That's our mama. That's our mama. <laughs> so... We get to create whatever we want to create. And one of the things we create is this illusion of not being a divine child. Let, let, let me just see what it feels like if I were to imagine or actually believe. Let's do that life. If I actually believed I was not a divine child of great mother, father, God, what would that be like? And that's what we're doing. That's what we're down here doing. We're playing that game. And Satan sits at the base of the tree until we're ready and we're tired. That game ain't fun no more. I ain't got beat up too many times. I don't like it. ain't fun no more. Divine child. Once you realize you're a divine child again of the great mother, father, God, and you cannot be tempted anymore to be pulled back into the illusion, he, he flees. His job is done. You ate the apple on your own choice. We ate the apple on our own choice. And once we've digested it, and that's what's going on with this Scorpio sun still in Vedic. It's in the energy for the soul astrology to be regenerating right now. And that makes a lot of sense. Regeneration is death and rebirth. Happy Christmas, Hawanaka. Okay, and so that's when Jesus was born. And at that time, there were 10 months in the calendar, I believe. Uh, it depends. I forget the date for the Romulus calendar. But the Romulus calendar uh, took over the lunar calendar from the goddess era. And so that is what takes us into understanding the difference between astrology and mythology. Now, Great Mother incarnates as the moon. Astrology and mythology are very closely linked. Western astrology is based on the actual incarnation, you know, of the physical earth. And so it's a very yang orientation. And to balance that out, in its mythology, it says that the earth goddess is a woman. And so in order to balance out that very strong orientation, that perceptual orientation of yourself as a divine child, okay, before you are incarnated, then if you're highest science about the cosmos then is looking from an orientation of I'm a divine child it balances out that soul experience it gives it a contrast to where we will be indoctrinated conditioned educated to believe the earth is a semblance of the yin energy 
to balance out that yang, that very strong incarnational physical material orientation. In the Vedic astrology, the cosmos is seen as a more physical material thing that can be measured and calculated then the actual feminine is the moon in terms of its cosmic orientation okay that is the mother and so the mother then is what you focus on if you're looking at the earth whatever planet you're looking at in Vedic astrology you're going to look through its moon and so if that is the highest spiritual orientation that you're going to have once you incarnate that the cosmos is femininely biased then when you actually incarnate to balance that out many of your earth gods are what you associate the earth with you know is the masculine because it is the actual physical incarnation of what you are experiencing from that perspective whereas in the western perspective the feminine is something that has to be taken care of so astrology and mythology are are the same that's why they're the same and that's why we talk about cosmic communities you know we live in a galaxy we live in the milky way that's just one of trillions upon trillions i'm sure googles we don't even have the word for it uh galaxies okay and so we talk about greek mythology and we talk about vedic astrology and we talk about Greek mythology, and they are so closely related because that's where we get the names of our planets, okay? That's what we name our planets because we observe the personalities and, again, very much personalizing and putting a specific lens on the physical experience. And so the assumption is one would have some understanding of that and that they are two divine children of the great mother, father, God, God incarnated as a God or a goddess. And that awareness is so basic and so fundamental to these readings that I just had to take a moment because sometimes saying that she provides clarity, balance, and confirmation is enough. But other times I have to really focus on we are divine children of the Great Mother, Father God. Therefore, we are divinely and dearly loved. We are dearly loved. And that because of that, there's never any judgment or condemnation. That is such a low vibration, but it's a valuable one because it engenders the desire to know more of thyself. And so, again, um, I highly encourage you to find out both of your Joytish and Western astrology to see where you are in terms of your material focus of the illusion that we are having, that we're experiencing right now as not being divine children of the Great Mother, Father God, and then see where your soul is pushing you when something is really on your heart and in your mind, which is what Great Mother is all about. She's right there with you. And so take advantage. Another way to look at it is just own your divinity and say, my mama right here, let me go ahead and look at my Vedic astrology and see, you know, how she's whispering because she's a still small voice. She ain't going to be on the radio. Ain't going to be in a whole bunch of blogs breaking it down, really, you know, so you understand it. You know, I mean, there will be some general information that we've had throughout the ages. But for you to know you, you're going to have to do some research. 
just enough for you to watch the back of Satan walk away. So you can really feel her love coming through her messages. Okay? So you can really feel that. Enjoy your December full moon 2017 full moon reading. Hello Capricorn Moon people. Let's see what Great Mother is speaking to you through your internal emotional intelligence. What is inspiring you to act and for you to express your personality during this Scorpio Sagittarius full moon? You know that's the light of the sun. It's very deep Scorpion soulful energy in the Vedic and in the Western the Sagittarius sun that sage so the rejuvenation and the sun. Capricorn is of course a very um, deep sign ruled by Saturn and it is in a position where in the collective unconscious the soul energy is really a kind of a fun loving. It's wanting to relieve itself of some of those vast emotional responsibilities that it has a tendency to take on and it's wanting to really be able to um, explore the expression of that fun loving uh, attention when needed, attention when warranted, when um, necessary to um, acknowledge your value in the world. Okay, and so you're wanting to, on a deep soulful level, have fun in the recognition that you're receiving for the work that you have done. Or you're wanting to, uh, maybe in the workplace, do some training based on the wisdom that you've gained, that you've gained or that you're gaining now. You're wanting to um, really get in touch with um, work-life balance in a new way, in a way that sheds light on your natural talents and abilities to organize and to um, be very productive right now. So um, Great Mother is coming through and she's saying that you're feeling a great deal of freedom right now. You have gone through an evolutionary period of some struggle, but it has paid off and you are feeling rewarded for sharing your gifts and your abilities and the great responsibilities emotionally even that you've taken on um, for others and with others. And now you're coming to a realization that it's time to have fun, to emancipate yourself, that deep soulful desire in the double yin, single yang card that says that that deep yin, that feminine energy that knows what it knows what it knows, is ready to go out into the world and act on it by releasing those things that signify through the third quarter moon that are no longer of service to you, mainly from the emotional internal intelligence kind because this is the card of the law of ego form and manifestation and so we have the ego form being represented by the gemini lunar uh, full moon uh, phase right now and that for you Capricorn moon people is in the sixth house uh, in the collective consciousness and so that work-life balance that may be health uh, that you're looking at in terms of even having more fun with your health. Maybe you're looking at new recipes. Maybe you're looking at a whole new lifestyle that's going to in incorporate things that you enjoy doing to take care of yourself. Maybe moving to a new location where you will be able to work out in a way that is more uh, in alignment with who you are and allows you to be more playful. There's a deep feeling of emancipation and releasing those things that continue to keep you held back uh, in ways that you have been in the past but moving forward in the season of light we have Yemiya the transformational opportunity for Capricorn moon people this is the surrender card the Europa goddess of the oceans and of the seas who is there to remind us that we do come from great depths of soulful emotional truth it's here to remind you that your transformational opportunity is in surrendering
yourself to your journey, to your heart journey. The heart opening is also simultaneously a heart breaking. So maybe some things from the past you're now realizing that, that do need to be let go are difficult to let go of or, 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 or things that you're thinking about that you are reminiscing about uh, maybe some things that don't agree with you dietarily or people relationships who don't have the best interest for you at heart or jobs work that you do that doesn't really honor your gifts talents and abilities and it's challenging to release those things but you're facing the challenge and you're making the decision to do so and you're acting on it which is why you're being transformed right now what Great Mother doesn't want you to overlook is that through this process, you are indeed embracing your shadow. And the shadow is not a negative thing. It is something that we have yet to be introduced to in our depths of our spirit of who we are. Through our entire composite karmic experience as souls, there are many aspects of ourselves that remain behind the veil for us to have a specific incarnated experience. And those things that we are working on this lifetime are even hidden from us until such time in life they become imperative for us to recognize. There are some things, Capricorn Moon people, that are becoming very imperative for you to recognize in order for you to move forward in that joyful, playful, childlike energy that you're deeply desiring. What aspects of your personality that are showing up now or in your experience, what patterns are showing up now that are inconvenient, that are things that you'd rather shun or that may be shameful for you to acknowledge? They're coming through to give you an opportunity to integrate them in conscious ways. Maybe those dietary things, for example, if that's the case, that give you kind of that comfort, but emotionally, but physically are not contributing to the lightness and the joyful playfulness energy that you need. Maybe they're coming forward to um, show you how self-sabotage is not allowing you to fully experience the freedom of your ego form in manifestation. Because remember, the soul has a purpose for our ego form. And when we are not realizing that, we feel it. That's the double yin and the ajna, the third eye. So we deeply feel that. And the deep soul Vedic energy of this Taurus moon and Vedic is saying to us, what's real, what's not? Okay, the Nakshatra Katrika is saying, you know, what's the difference between my integrity and where I'm not telling myself the truth? You know, where is my fidelity? What am I being faithful and loyal to? And what is it that maybe I'm not really recognizing within myself needs to be honored? Because the full moon light of Scorpio Jupiter is in Scorpio in the Vedic. And so that light of where you've been regenerated and where you've been um, um, reborn, emancipated, is definitely wanting to come through on a soul level. So allow it through your ego form to come through Capricorn Moon people. Sometimes we can allow our emotions to get overly structured in a way that no longer serves us. And so what Great Mother is asking you to do to serve yourself in a way that honors your divinity is to surrender to the process that's already underway in your heart the crossroads of the ego soul so that you can embrace your shadow and integrate it to reorganize your life in ways that serve and honor you as a divine child of God that you truly are. Remember always that Great Mother loves you and I do too. Great Mother speaks. I am Great Mother, Holy Spirit, Yin, Divine Mother, Cosmic Moon, Deep Space, the Moon.